Hi everyone, welcome back to Dev Dojo Academy. And in this playlist, we are going to talk about Project Reactor. So the Project Reactor Essentials is a training that I'm creating because I would like to create a playlist about uh, Spring Web Flux. But unfortunately, without uh, a basic understanding of Project Reactor, it may be a little bit difficult to understand. So the Project Reactor Essentials, we will cover several concepts about what this has to offer. So it will be more like a tutorial style where we are going to see how we work with Mono, Flux, some operators, how we concat uh, streams and so on. So it will give you a nice understanding about how the Project Reactor works. And uh, this presentation is because, well, we need a couple of things before we start digging into code. So I'm just going to scratch the basics of uh, reactive program. And I highly advise you to read about the concepts because we are going to get into code uh, starting from the next video. So just talking a little bit about reactive. So what is reactive programming? So it's not related to Project Reactor yet. Is what is reactive programming? So basically reactive programming is just about the concept. It's not about the implementation. And when we talk about reactive, we are talking about event. So in React, uh, programming, you have something that's going to trigger an event and you have something that is going to consume that event. And React programming is about daily strings, so we will see daily strings everywhere. So when you are uh, using React programming, daily strings are going to be the spine of your application. So events, messages, calls, and even failures are going to be uh, translated into a daily string. So basically in your code, you are going to create daily strings of anything. So I mean events, uh, click events, for example, hover events, HTTP requests, ingested messages, availability, notifications, changes on variable caches, measures from sensor, anything that may happen in your system will be translated into uh, any string. So this has an interesting side effect that your uh, application will become asynchronous. And as you can see here, the next step is that when we talk about reactor programming, we are talking about asynchronous programming. So in Java, we have some asynchronous uh, libraries. For example, we could use Dreadpools for join parallel strings, compatible future. But when we are talking about reactive, they are a little bit different because they also should be non-blocking. So we have uh, four concepts. We have asynchronous, no blocking, uh, we have uh, back pressure, and we have functional declarative programming. So no blocking, it means that once you have a thread working, uh, that thread will not be blocked. So imagine that you are executing a request to a database. So if you watched uh, the Spring Boot Essentials, you saw that we were connecting to a database, and until we get a response from the database, that thread will be blocked means that we are wasting resources because the thread is not doing anything. Who is doing the work is the database. So with non-blocking, that thread could do something completely different. And when we get the response back, we just create another thread to finish the work. And uh, back pressure is something that uh, is useful when your, let's say your subscriber cannot handle the pressure. So imagine that you have a cake factory. That cake factory, you have someone that's baking the the, the cakes and you have someone that's consuming those cakes. So imagine that you can bake uh, 10 cakes per minute, but someone consuming that cake can only uh, take one cake per minute. It means that if you try to send those 10 cakes, the subscriber uh, probably will blow. So the back pressure is the subscriber will tell, hey, please give me only one cake per minute because this is what I can handle. I know that you can handle more. Uh, you can produce more, but I can only handle one per minute. And functional uh, declarative programming, it's about the pure functions, lambda expressions, immutability, a code that's testable, a code that's maintainable. So one thing that you should be uh, should have in mind is that uh, reactive programming is not easy. So you have to be really careful, like Uncle Ben uh, said to Peter Parker, with great powers comes great responsibility. And this is perfect for reactive programming. And when we talk about React, we have this word that's cold and hot. So we have, uh, when we are talking about events, we usually have observables that's observing something that's happening. happening, And we have the observables that can be hot or cold or cold or hot. So the difference is the cold 
are the lazy ones. So what do I mean by lazy? They do not do anything until someone starts observing them. So they will only start running when they are consumed. So code strings are used to represent asynchronous actions. So for example, uh, imagine that you have a file and this file won't be downloaded until someone goes there and start subscribing to the publisher that will publish that file. And the hot ones are the hard workers. Hot uh, are active even before the subscription uh, happens. So imagine, for example, that you have a sensor that is always transmitting data. It doesn't matter if you have someone subscribe it or not, you will always have that data. So it means that you will only get the data at the moment that you subscribe. Everything that um, happened before will probably uh, be lost. But there are some cases where you can cache that uh, what's happening while you don't have any subscribers. But this is way too complex for what we're trying to achieve here. And we have this initiative. So we have React programming and then we have this initiative that's reactive strings. So basically some people got together and they tried to create a standard for asynchronous string processing with non-blocking back pressure. Everything that the reactive programming is about. And basically it processes a potentially unbounded number of elements in a sequence asynchronously, passing elements between components with, of course, a mandatory non-blocking pressure. So we can check this uh, reactive strings, uh, dot org. So this is all the information, and you can see here at uh, when we had we got the release from Java 9, we have this concurrent flow. So don't get confused about. Uh, Java streams and reactive streams, they are totally unrelated. And then we have the reactive strings API components. So basically the reactive strings initiative said, okay, so if you want to have the implementation of the reactive strings, you have to provide the following uh, implementations. We have the publisher, oh, all these are uh, interfaces. The publisher is the one responsible for the generation of an unbounded number of asynchronous events. So it's the guy that's uh, publishing events. We have the subscriber. As you can see, subscriber is the one that will consume those events. And we have this subscription. So think as a subscription as a context kind of object that will be shared between the publisher and the subscriber. Because this subscription is the one, for example, every time the subscriber will go to the publisher, say, hey, I'm subscribing to you it will create a subscription and for example if you want to say hey i would like only one cake per minute because i cannot handle more you are going to tell to the subscription so the subscriber will tell the subscription that will be sent when you are uh, going to the, the publisher so the publisher will only give you one cake per minute and we have uh, this one the next one that's the processor so processor it's a bit complex because it represents a stage of data that's uh, processing between a subscriber and a publisher. So it means that's bound by both. So it has to obey the contract between the publisher and the subscriber. So this is a, a bit kind of difficult to understand when you don't code, but once we get down to code, it will be easier to, to see what we are uh, talking here. So just remember for now, publisher, subscriber, subscription. Forget about the processor for a while. And we have the APIs. We have the standard and we will need an implementation. And here we are going with Project Reactor. So Project Reactor is one of uh, many implementations of these strings. You could use Rx uh, Java, for example, is another option. But, well, we are trying to keep it simple because Spring Web Flex is using this one by default. So in the end, they all have uh, these advantages and uh, disadvantages and uh, that's actually not part of the, the purpose of this training. So we are just going to use Project Reactor, nothing special about it, just because it's, uh, Spring Web Flux is using out of the box. And Reactor, it's um, fully non-blocking and provides uh, efficient man management. Everything you see here, you can get from the website and uh, offer two reactive and composable APIs. We are going to talk a lot about these two, Flux and Mono, just think if you are talking about non-reactive way, Flux is kind of a list of elements and Mono is just like an, an option or just a simple object or void in that case. And um, well, since it's working with uh, Spring, uh, you can imagine that's uh, really well suitable for microservices architecture. 
and offers, of course, since it's implementing the reactive strings, the back pressure ready. So we have this back pressure ready network for HTTP, TCP, and UDP as well. And uh, it provides a wide range of operators. This is what will make our life easier when working with uh, reactive programming. So we are going to use these operators a lot. So as you can see, it allows us to filter, select, transform, and combine strings. You can check more details inside uh, the website projectreactor.io. Their documentation is pretty nice, open sourced. Everybody can uh, update the documentation if they see any errors. So I think that's uh, all the information that I wanted to share. Of course, we're going to get into more details when we start coding. And I think it's about time to get down to code. So see you in the next video. Bye.